I had sailors that trusted me to help them out and make sure they grew and developed. And so I learned very early that life is about relationships, regardless of what business you're in. And I carried that relationship focus into my real estate business. So I didn't worry about, well, I got to do this because I need money and I got to close transactions and I got to make deals happen. I just went out and started making friends with people, right? Get out there and get your name out there and build relationships with people because at some point people are going to need a real estate agent. So just make a lot of friends with property owners and when the time is right, they'll let you know. Hello and welcome to the Agent Podcast with your host, that's me, Raymond Schulzheim. Let's dive in. Hello and welcome back to the Agent Podcast. I'm here with my buddy, Walter Key. Walter, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm glad you're here, man. So Walter, let's dive into it. 21 years of military service. First and foremost, thank you for your service. My uh, pleasure. Second of all, what was the transition like into real estate? So it's actually really interesting. So I thought that I was going to do 30 years in the Navy. There's just, there was no reason not to, right? The, you know, when you run the numbers out, it's a better retirement check after 30 years by 20. And so the Navy actually sent me to Central Virginia. And I was like, this is just another stop along the way. And about three months after being in Central Virginia, my wife and I said, you know what? We're not leaving. This is it for us. This is the spot. And so I said, well, I guess I better figure out what I'm going to do when I grow up and start putting some plans together. And so when I was at about the 18 year mark, I, I mean, I knew for decades I was going to do real estate. I had been a real estate investor for years. I had bought a house almost every single time I transferred. So every three years or so. And so I knew real estate was what I was going to do. It was just a matter of when do I do it? And when we decided to retire, I said, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started because it takes time for most agents to build up that business to a level where they can supplement whatever income they lose when they walk away from their job. So my goal was in 2018 to work a few years in real estate while also being active duty so that when I retired, my family didn't see any change in income level, right? I just, my only goal was to make enough in real estate so that when I left the Navy, the income gap was already closed. That was my only real goal. And, you know, 12 months later, I made significantly more in real estate than I did after almost 20 year career in the Navy. So I went, okay, this is, this is going to work out. Okay. <laughs> and the rest is history. So I spent really about three years active duty Navy and doing full-time real estate, very carefully managing my calendar. Cause you, you don't get to choose when you go to work for the military, right? You got a schedule and, and it's set you there until the job is done. So I was, you know, in the weekends on, in the evenings, doing the things that you need to do to build a business, making calls and showing clients houses and all that stuff. And you know, I woke up one day and went, yeah, this is going to work out just fine. When I'm, I'm perfectly fine. When I leave the Navy, I'm ready to rock and roll. How did you know where to start? With real estate. So I think somewhere along the way of my military career, I was fortunate. I, I progressed through the ranks pretty quickly. And so the majority of my 21 year Navy career, I was in a senior leadership position. I had sailors that trusted me to help them out and make sure they grew and developed. And so I learned very early that life is about relationships, regardless of what business you're in. And I carried that relationship focus into my real estate business. So I didn't worry about, well, I got to do this because I need money and I got to close transactions and I got to make deals happen. I just went out and started making friends with people, right? Get, get out there and get your name out there and build relationships with people because at some point people are going to need a real estate agent. So just make a lot of friends with property owners and when the time is right, they'll let you know. And, and that's really, that, that was it for me. Focus on the relationships and everything else fell in line. So is that the same philosophy you follow during your 21-year career and why you progressed through the ranks? I, I think so. Like I had always focused on what do I do to help other people, right? And so, for example, I joined the Navy in 1999. It took less than nine years to become what we call a senior, a senior non-commissioned officer. I was a senior enlisted. And so the whole rest of my 21-year career was truly taking sailors and teaching them how to learn and grow and develop into their roles and maybe. So I had always been outwardly focused on how can I help you be a better version of whatever it is you want to be. And so I think that just 
And I just carried that over into real estate and it made, it just made sense. So there's a philosophy that says, if you really want to learn something, teach it. Yeah. Where did your drive or ambition or hunger or desire for personal development come from? Because when you're talking about helping people, when you're talking about helping other sailors, officers, you know, grow and evolve into that next best version of themselves, that's coming from somewhere, not only to the point of, hey, I want to do this because it makes me feel good, but also for yourself. Because if you want that for somebody else, most likely you want that for yourself. So where did that come from? Yeah, I think part of that was probably, you know, I had a lot of great leaders do the same thing for me when I joined the Navy, right? I, I, when I was, a little quick backstory, when I was 15 years old, I had decided I'm joining the Navy. I know exactly what I want to do for the rest of my life. And, and I started training myself towards that end. When I got in the Navy, though, and like, I didn't have a clue, like I'm brand new, I, just like anyone else, you don't know what you don't know. And so I was fortunate to have some really great leaders that did the same thing for me. And they, they poured into me and they taught me how to continuously be a lifelong learner and how to challenge myself and how to find new opportunities. And so, you know, that was what I did throughout my Navy career is anytime I changed commands, I would just look for those people that were clearly dedicated to other folks and say, hey, what do we need to do at this command? What's the gap that we need to fill here? How do I do that? And they would teach me what I needed to know to be successful. And so I think a lot of it came from just great leaders when I was a young man, and it just flowed from there. You, you always find those really great role models, and then you wake up one, one day and you say, I, I need to emulate those really great role models. I can't just continue to look forward and say, what do I need? But at some point, you got to look back or look down and say, let me bring you along as well. And so you turn into a role model without even really knowing that that's what you're doing. So for you, it just became a habit. Yeah, it was just, it was, that's what you did, right? You just showed up every day and you gave it your best and you constantly learned how to be better. That's just what you do. I love that. So fast forward to today from 1999 of being 15 years old and knowing exactly what you want to do and where you want to go. What does your business look like? What brokerage are you at? What are you leading? Do you have a team? Can you talk to me about that? I'm, I'm a really an all in ball. In, in that regard right now, because I spent up until very recently, I spent my whole career at Long and Foster. Love the people, love the broker, phenomenal institution, a solo agent, no transaction coordinator, no administrative assistant, like everything that I have done, I've done on my own and it's worked out just fine. But recently we decided to move back to Florida. That's where the family is at. That's where almost everyone has migrated over the last several decades. So we've decided to move to Florida. So I had to change brokerages. Long and Foster's just doesn't have a footprint in Florida. And so I really started researching a ton of different brokerages because at this point in my career, it was about, I already know what I need to know and I'm, and I'm helping other agents do it. Let me find the position that helps me put my family in the right spot long-term, right? Because when I, when I got into real estate, I didn't need the money. I was active duty Navy. I was doing fine. I already had a budget. Our you know, bills were paid. And so I really just joined the first brokerage that I found because I really liked the people. And that was the end of it. I didn't do any shopping. I didn't research other brokerages. I just did one interview and I said, I like this. I'll go with it. In, in hindsight, I put a lot of money on the table because of the, you know, commission splits and you know, sure. all, all of the things that, while it's a phenomenal broker, the things that they just didn't offer me that new brokerages are offering, are uh, offering agents you know, with cloud-based technology and new commission splits and there's so many other benefits out there. So I am both licensed in Virginia and still currently with Long and Foster. And I'm licensed in Florida with EXP. Now, normally you can't do that because yeah, you would, you can't have a conflict of interest working for two different brokerages, but I'm in a unique situation where I'm basically doing a corporate buyout, if you will. And I have another agent that's literally going to take over my business in Virginia. And so there's a, you know, as of January 1st, it'll be their business and I'm helping them transition. We're doing some joint marketing and we basically have partnered until that is finished, which is why I'm broker, two different brokerages, just, it's a weird situation. So in the very near future, I will be Florida full-time with EXP. Again, I'll be a solo agent, no transaction coordinator, but I'm focusing a lot more of my time now on 
coaching other agents, helping them build their businesses, helping them be successful. Because what I've found, you know, I've been very fortunate is I don't need a lot of money. I've made some money. I've paid off all my debts. You know, I followed a really good plan. And so as we wait for our lake home in Florida to be remodeled so we can move into it, I'm looking into a situation where I'm selling a multi hundred thousand dollar business that's going to provide me revenue for years. Uh, I've got a military retirement check. I'm 70% disabled, so I've got a disability retirement check. I don't need to do a ton of business. Now, I do because I enjoy it. I really, really love it. So I make a lot of money in real estate, but I'm going to try to focus more on helping other agents replicate my success than going out there and grinding and closing transactions. Can we pause there for a minute and go back to transitioning out of Long & Foster into eXp and talk about Talk about that. How did you know that it was an option to sell your business and put somebody else in place so that you can so, continue? Yeah, and so that is a very unique byproduct, I suppose, of being with Long and Foster because they've been around for fifty plus years. They're they're, they're a huge corporate entity, lots of great technology, and you know, brick and mortar brokerages all up and down the East Coast. And so that was actually a program inside Long and Foster where I could reach out to their business coaches and say, "I'm going to transition out." But we'd like to keep the book of business with a person that I know and I trust. And if we can keep it with Long and Foster, everybody wins. And so they actually walked me through that program. I recruited the agent. Recruited is not really the best word. I I interviewed lots of agents and I found the one that had a similar personality to me. They treated people the way I wanted to treat people. And so it made it a really easy transition to hand them my clients over a period of time. And then, you know, the, the, you know, the guys I've run that kind of corporate buyout program assessed my business, how much money had I made, how much, how big was my database, how well was I maintaining it? And they basically put a dollar amount to what my business was worth. And then, you know, in interviewing the other agents, when I found the one I thought made sense, I said, hey, this is, this is the construct. This is how it would work. Are you interested? And it's, so it was a win-win. I get to transition all my clients to an agent that I trust. And that agent got to expand their business substantially by taking over all those clients. Everybody wins. Is that common in yeah. other brokerages or is this a very specialized thing that? Only- yeah, that's a pretty unique thing. I don't know of any other broker. There might be some out there. I don't know of a lot of other brokerages that have that. I just know that Long and Foster did simply based on uh, the size and how long they've been around and they have a great corporate entity in place. That's a cool program. Like that's Yeah, yeah it's, I mean, it's- Really it special. was really neat for me. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. So now you're with EXP, you're in this, you know, cloud-based brokerage and you, I know some of the other people within your, your group, so to speak, if that's the right term, you guys have like a special thing going on. Do you mind talking about that and getting that, getting into that a little bit and kind of no, dissecting sure. how it works? You know, like if I'm a newly licensed real estate agent and I want to join a group that will show me not only what to do, but how to do it. It seems like you guys are the place to go for that. I tend to think so. That's, that's why I, I joined Double Your Income Coaching, the, the group. And so when, I, when we say group or team, well, I would only mean a traditional brokerage construct where you give us 50% of your pay and you're on our team, air quote. It's just a family, right? It's a family of top producing agents who care enough to give back to new agents by doing free coaching and training. And then if they want to join Double Your Income Coaching, we just have such a massive training apparatus built out on top of everything that EXP already does. It, I, I truly believe it's, there's nothing else like it in terms of taking an agent wherever they are and saying, let me show you how to do more if you want to. And so I've seen agents that are brand new and have never closed a transaction come over to Double Your Income Coaching and just crush it their first year. And I've seen agents who have been around for years and are doing, you know, very respectable numbers, right? 15, 20, 30 deals a year, but they just know that there, there's more they could be doing. And so we say, okay, well, come over here. Let's take a look at your business. Let's see what you are doing. And then let us show you some strategies that other top producing agent coaches are using. And they'll teach you exactly what they do, how they do it, and how you can replicate that if you want to. So I, I have a little thing I call it. It's just something I made up. It's not anything proprietary, but I call it prospecting for your personality type, right? Because I can tell you 
literally dozens of ways you could grow your business right now. You, you can door knock, you can cold call for sell by owners, expires, geo leads, listings from landlords, listing from retirement communities, call your CPA and work out a partnership. On and on, divorce lawyers, probate, estate planning, first time home buyer seminars, right? On and on and on and on. All these great ways you could build your business because I guarantee there's things that you're not doing that you could be. But not all of those things fit everyone's personality type. Right. So like, for example, we have guys that never cold call, but they do 20, 30 deals a year just by actively prospecting Facebook groups, looking for folks that might need an agent and they do, and they, you know, it's all about the relationship and they, and they do great business that way. They never cold call. I pick up the phone all the time when I'm doing business and I call for sell by owners. I call geo leads. I like making that connection over a conversation that doesn't work for everybody. And yeah, you know, so when you find the things that really click with your personality type, you're more inclined to do those things. And when you just do those things, your business booms. And so it's sometimes it's not even about, it's not even about what you're teaching because they fundamentally know, like an agent knows I got to go prospect, but how do I prospect in a way that I'm passionate about it and, and I really enjoy it so that I'll do it. And that's, that's, what's really unique about us is it's not any one strategy. We have top producing agents that are using dozens of different strategies. We got a guy doing six figures every couple months off of TikTok videos. We got a guy doing six figures off of YouTube alone. He does nothing but his YouTube channel. You know, I'm, I'm not a YouTuber. I tried it. I got like six videos and I haven't made one in months. It just, it wasn't my thing, but it's his thing and he crushes it. So if someone is interested in building out a YouTube channel, come over to Double Your Income Coaching and talk to our guy and he'll show you exactly what he has done. And all you have to do is then do it Bottle and replicate his success. And we don't charge a dime for anything that we do, right? And, you know, it's an EXP model. So it's all that basic stuff. It's an 80-20 split. You cap, you get your money back. If you make Icon Agent, which is easy to do when you're doing great deals, you get all that money back as company stock, right? All that stuff that EXP offers is what you get when you join. We don't charge a dime for anything that we do. We've got literally thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of coaching available to every agent that joins us for free to help them be successful. Because we, we believe that everybody wins together. So why wouldn't we pour back into other agents and help them be successful? I love that. What are some of the things that you would tell somebody who's on the fence about which brokerage to choose? I think you talked about something really important, which was prospecting for your personality type, right? Because if you don't want to do something, you're not going to show up for it. And exactly. you're going to push against this resistance, right? So if you're somebody who's shy and not necessarily outgoing, you are not going to show up to door knock or even cold call. You know, there, there's other, other strategies and tactics in order to generate leads for your business and for lead gen to do what you have to do in order to get you where you want to be based on your goals, whatever those may be. But for other people, I think that personality type is also relevant to brokerages. Mm -hmm. So what would you tell somebody who's on the fence about, hey, I'm a new agent and what brokerage should I join? And I know these different models and there's commission splits, there's different teams. Right. What are some things that you could share with so, that? So the, the resounding conversations that I've had with old agents, new agents, et cetera, I have always told agents that there are three things you should look for before, don't even worry about commission splits and caps and don't look at the perks, right? Don't look at how much money could I possibly make? Because the reality is, regardless of the commission split, if you're not doing business, it's zero. So it doesn't help you. There are three things that every agent should have, regardless of what brokerage you're at. You should have technology, training, and the right environment. So if, especially as a new agent, Put yourself in a position that you can learn, not just how to stay out of jail, right? That's what a real estate license school will do for you. Here's the things to do to not go to get sued or go to jail. But look for areas where there's training in place to actually teach you how to grow your business and, and, and budget your time wisely and actively prospect and, and do deals for yourself. Don't rely on a team to generate them. Don't please, gosh, don't, don't pay for leads. Never paid a dime for leads my entire career. I hate it. The, the idea is just 
ridiculous. So find the, the, the areas where you can be trained properly to be successful. And, and that does exist in other brokerages outside of EXP. I personally believe that EXP is one of the best because we have so much of the training, but there are other brokerages out there that offer good training as well. Find those places. The technology, right? As an, again, especially as a new agent, find a brokerage that has the technology built in so that you don't have to go, okay, I'm a licensed broker or licensed agent at this brokerage now. Now I have to find a website. Now I have to find a CRM. I have to pay for all these things. I have to figure out how I do my marketing. How do I do my advertising? If you find a brokerage that has that built in, even if you, you pay a little bit more in a commission split, per, perhaps to get access to those great services, it's usually worth it rather than an, a brand new agent who has enough going on, right? They're still, they're trying to learn a business. Now they have to also try to go out and find all of these other little ancillary software suites and electronic signing signatures and transaction management and CRMs. And there's so many things out there that a new agent doesn't think about until they're ready to do a transaction. And then they're like, well, wait, well, what about this? Well, how do I do a CMA and all this data? So finding a brokerage that has some really great technology built into it and save you a ton of headache and money so that you can focus on actually building your business. And then the last one is, is truly, in my opinion, the most important, find the right environment. And by that, I mean, get around the people that are going to pour into you and help you grow. There are great agents all over the country. There are not so great agents all over the country. I used to joke, there's roughly 2 million licensed agents in America. If I took 2 million people, I don't care what the job is. If I took 2 million people all doing the same job and I put them in the same place, some of them are going to be phenomenal. Some of them should be out flipping burgers somewhere and everyone else is going to be somewhere in the middle. So say no different in real estate. There are really great agents and there are not so great agents. Find the people who are going to help you grow. I, you know, I can't remember who said, it. I think it might've been Jim Rohn. That you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I yeah, love what you're saying it because it's grown. absolutely true. Surround yourself with the kind of people you want to be and you will absolutely become those people. So find the right environment where the people around you care enough to pour into you, to share their experiences, to help you learn, to help you grow. And, and, and you can model them to say, I see what you're doing and I really like it. Tell me how you did it so I can do it too. Um, and when you find those people, it all just starts to click. And if you can get all three of those in the same spot, you're golden. That's what I always tell agents to look for. I love that. I guess touching on something, what makes a great agent? You know, I understand that that is a loaded question and is subjective, yeah. but in your opinion, in your experience, what makes a great agent? Man, that's a good one. You're right. It's a loaded question. I would boil it down to a great agent is going to know the difference between the value of a relationship and the value of a lead. And I can pay for leads all day long and maybe I convert some and I, and I do business. That's fine. But when you understand the real value of building relationships with people and how that will feed your business, your referrals, your repeat clients, your online reviews, just pouring into each client it, up to a level that is not just, well, I got to check the boxes and do this transaction so I get my check. Actually caring about the clients, becoming their friends and family, and then following up with them on a regular basis so that you never lose contact with those past clients. It's all about with, with the relationship. If you focus on the relationship aspect, you will absolutely do well in this business. I, I, I teach some agents, right? We have this conversation. This happened about two months ago, maybe. I was having a conversation with an agent. She's been around for four or five years and she's just not doing a lot of business. So I said, well, let's have a call. Let's talk it through and see where we can help. And so she says, well, you know, over the last three or four years, I've done maybe 10 or 15 deals a year. I said, okay, well, that's great. So you've got 50, 60, 70 past clients. And she says, yeah, but I've recently found out that some of those clients are, are listing their house with other agents right now. Four years later, it's time to move, which statistically that makes sense, right? You know, 
four to six years. Most people, most people move. And so she was starting to see her past clients who she said, I absolutely love them. We got along great. They left me a great review. But now four years later, they're listing with somebody else. And I said, okay, well, let me ask you this. When was the last time you called, texted, emailed, or stopped by? Crickets. And I said, listen, don't take this the wrong way because I don't mean to offend you, but this is the reality of what has happened. They forgot your name, right? You were amazing. You did a great job with them. You closed an awesome deal. And four years later, they don't remember who you are. So when it's time for a new agent, they got to go find another one because they don't remember you. So that is simply a great agent with, a, with not a good follow-up plan. And so we talked about how do you follow up with those past clients? How do you reach back out to those past clients and rekindle that relationship so that you can then start following up and staying top of mind with them? So there's all kinds of great stuff like that. If you just focus on the relationships, building new ones, maintaining old ones, rekindling the ones that have dropped off, most people will find so much business just in their own database if they're really properly managing and nurturing those relationships. I love that. And it's, I think it's one of those things that's safe to say, you know, to be true, right? Oh, absolutely. It is just so valuable in, you know, having those touch points and staying in touch. And you do these things to stay top of mind so that you don't become the forgotten agent. Yeah. I said earlier, I, I, I've never paid a dime for lead generation, yep. right? And I'm, and I'm, I am passionate about that. And that's probably one of the number one questions that I see online and, you know, different Facebook groups and forums as new agents will be like, is it worth paying for realtor.com? Is it worth paying for bold leads? Is how much do you pay for Zillow? And what else is there out there that I can pay for leads? And I just cringe. And those, I do my best to go right to those agents and try to help them understand there's a better way. So you have to think about it. If, if I don't pay for someone else to send me random phone numbers and, and names, how do I grow a business? Now, mind you, I, 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 again, I said I transferred here from the military. I haven't lived in Central Virginia my whole life, right? When I came here in less than one year after moving here, I got my license. So I hear that all the time. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm new to the area. I don't have a really big sphere. Okay, then whoop de doo Go build your sphere, right? I was the same way, right? I showed up in 2017. I got my license in 2018 to a brand new market. And fast forward a year later, I'm one of the top producing agents. It's not because I went out and paid for a bunch of random junk and I sipped it through it. It was simply because I was genuine and I was trying to build relationships with everyone I came in contact with. If you've got a church, be friendly and engaging with your church family. If you've got kids that are in soccer, go be friendly and engaging out in the soccer field. Go to the meetups, go to your chamber of commerce meetings, go get involved in your community in ways that get you in front of people so you can have conversations. Because almost any conversation, you can literally do this at the Starbucks, okay? Every conversation within the first maybe five minutes of meeting the new person, almost always it goes to, what do you do, right? That's a, that's a super easy icebreaker. So when you're standing in the coffee shop and you're just in a great mood that day, so you buy the coffee of the person in front of you because you can, and now you've got three minutes before the barista has your cups ready. Well, you're standing there in silence, looking at your phone for three minutes, right? Engage that person in conversation. Hey, happy Monday. What are you up to today? I hope you have a great day, right? Just start having a conversation. And probably before the coffee's hot, the conversation will turn to, what do you do? Oh, you're a ballet teacher. That's awesome. I have, you know, my, my baby girl's 18 now, but when she was about six, she got into the ballet. That's really cool. What do you do? Oh, I'm a real estate agent. I just love helping people in the, in the market. If they're interested, that will spark, hey, that's awesome. Can I have your card? And if they're not interested, that's okay. You bought somebody a coffee. You still made a great connection. Nothing wrong with that at all. You just, it's an, it's an outward focus on how do you add value to other people? And then that value is always returned when they need the service, they reach out to you. And it's not because you're a friendly real estate agent. It's because you're a friendly person who just happens to be a real estate agent. Right. I love it. What is something that you would love to pay forward? If somebody can just leave this conversation with one thing, 
What is one thing you would tell our peers out there in the field? Oh, man, I, you know, I keep going back to it, but really, truly, like, stop focusing on transactions. I'll give it, I'll use this as an, a quick example because I do a lot of cold calling. I do, I, I teach people to have conversations. The reason most people don't cold call well or, or really just they don't have conversations well is because their mentality is, I have to because I need. And so they, they're going to pick up the phone call and, and regardless of what it is, right? They're, or same with door knocking, but let's say they're calling geo leads, expireds for sell by owners whatever they're doing. They're picking up the phone going, I have to make this call because I need to pay the bills, right? And so the mentality is a, I have to because I need to. When you change your mindset to, I want to make this call because I want to add value to people. And the more people I call, the more people I can add value to, that changes your whole persona and, and, I, and I can't, there's no scientific quantification, but I'm certain of it. It's your call sounds different to the person on the other end of the line because your whole demeanor has now changed. And so rather than you calling them and sounding like a salesy robot because you have to, because you need to close some deals and feed the kids, you're just calling to, I, I say you're calling to introduce yourself to your future friends and family, right? You're just catching up with people that don't know you yet. And so if that's the one thing I would tell people is if you could focus your mindset to how do I add value out into the world as opposed to how do I draw business in, the business will always come. You know, money will be there. Deals will happen if you just focus on adding value to others first. Can we stay here for a minute? Sure. I love this subject. The reason I love this subject is because I am in a constant state of getting that next version of myself, right? Like I just want to get 1% better as fast as possible. Yeah. So it compounds over time. How does somebody who doesn't have that mindset both start to develop that mindset and create a pace for themselves so that that mindset can evolve and grow over time? Yeah. So I would say you start by, by really just taking a pause and thinking about all the things that you have already that you could be grateful for, right? We get out of the, I need, I need, I need, or I want, I want, I want mentality. And that's, you know, it's perfectly natural, right? Everyone gets into that of, I want to do this. I want the next big thing. I want the notoriety. I want whatever it is. Or, you know, a lot of people are genuinely in a position where they feel like, oh, well, I need to do this. I need to pay this. I need to get this debt going. I need to save for college, Right. But it just gets you in a constant cycle of, of really it's negativity of I need, I need, I need, I want, I want, I want. If you pause and you really take a breath and go, you know what? I have, I have, I have, I have this, I have that. My kids are fed every night. They have a warm bed. Start thinking about all the things that you already have that you can be grateful for. And that will change the mentality. And it's easier to be pleasant and add value to other people when you yourself feel like there's some value there, right? You, you have to take stock of where you're at, what you've accomplished, rather than focus on the things you don't have, focus on the things you do have. Because when you start to value what you have, it's easier to give it away, right? If I'm in a position or a mentality where I just don't think I've accomplished anything, what do I have to offer someone else? But if you really stop and pause and you look around, you'll notice, you know, just about anyone that has a job at all in America is already better off than 99% of the rest of the, of the human population. Right? That's just a statistical fact. So if you've got a roof over your head, if your kids are fed every day, if, you're, you're, if they're sleeping in a bed, man, you've actually got it really good. And there's value it's to you because you've already done those things. So quit getting down on yourself and really start saying, you know what? I am in a position where I can add something of value to somebody else. I have something unique that I can share. And maybe it's just my genuine love of people. And I'm going to try to convey that to other people. And, and I'll do it in a way that, yeah, sure, we might do a real estate deal. But at the end of it, 
with family because of the connection that we made. I love that. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. I think one thing that I've noticed is a lot of newer real estate agents are not confident. You know, they got into this business for whatever it is. Maybe they thought it was going to be easy. Maybe somebody told them they were good in sales or they have a sparkling personality, a combination of factors. But not being confident often comes from not having self-worth or that self-value mm -hmm. that you're talking about. What are a couple things that somebody can do who maybe, I call it suffering because I really feel like that's what it is. You know, if, if somebody doesn't see value in themselves, like that person is suffering inside. Yeah. And that is hard to work on. That is hard to overcome. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. But what are a couple pointers that we can help somebody with who may yeah. not see value in themselves or have that maybe missing, you know, that aspect of yeah. starting their business and that's it. Yeah, I will say that and I, I get that. I totally do. So I grew a quick, a quick story, not to take up a ton of our time. Imagine the poorest, most rundown, you know, product of society environment you can imagine for a young kid. That was my upbringing. I mean, I remember at one point living in a rental house. It was a two bedroom, one bathroom house. Me, my mom, her boyfriend, two siblings, half a dozen drunken bums at any given time. No back door, right? Just not a good environment. I would go the whole school year with a Sharpie on the bottom of my shoes that said 50 cents because the only shoes I got the next year were from Goodwill, right? And just embarrassed to be in gym class because when we had to stretch, I had to put my foot up and people would see that my shoes cost 50 cents, like just a really, really rough environment. Single mom dropped out of high school in the eighth grade, really had to struggle her way through life for a long time. And so the kids were just the natural byproduct of that environment and it sucked. And so there was absolutely a point where I thought I have nothing to offer society, right? I'm the poorest person I know. We have nothing. It's just a crappy spot to be. So I get that. I totally, I, you know, I've been there and I understand what you got to do though, is you got to understand, you know, and, and, you know, there are other people out there that are in a similar situation. So I would say, seek out those similar mindsets where people started with nothing and they got to somewhere better. Right. And I'm not, you know, I'm, I might be one of them, but there are better examples out there. Right. Like, you know, David Goggins is a phenomenal example. Yeah. A hundred percent. There, there's a ton of them out there. I, I would tell people to grab Hal El Elrod's The Miracle Morning. It's a super quick read, but that guy is a great example of a complete crashed and crushed life turning around to being Again. incredibly successful, right? So, so that's a great example. I'm a, I'm a small example of that, but I did some interesting things. You know, I went from dirt poor kid in, in the middle of Springfield, Missouri, walking to the bar in the evenings to find my mother to see if we had food to, you know, a very successful military career, very successful real estate career. We're in a pretty good spot now. So... My, my story is a very small sliver of that, but there are other really popular stories of people that were in that position that some people are in right now and they, they fought their way out of it. And so learn from their lessons, do the things that they did. And I'll tell you one thing that a lot of people, almost all of them will, will fall back to. And I actually teach this in my time management course towards the end of it is understand the difference between motivation and discipline. Because motivation is very fleeting. And so you might see something, you might read a story, you might watch a snippet on TV and you get temporarily pumped up to do something. And that quickly fades around your bad circumstances. But when you, when you make it a point to be disciplined in fighting your way through that, right? Whatever it might be. So if you look at, for example, The Miracle Morning, there are several things that he recommends everyone do to be successful. And it's basic stuff, right? Get up a little early, work out, drink water, do some journaling, do some meditation, have some positive affirmations. Those things work. It's proven because many, many, many successful people do those things. Them, yep. So they clearly work. But you can be motivated temporarily and then not want to wake up at 5 a.m. when the alarm clock goes off, right? The disciplined approach is what leads to habits and those habits you, you build are what leads to your success. So absolutely understand it doesn't happen overnight, but you, you can, over the course of a night, start putting things in place in a disciplined approach to get you where you want to be. And it happens, it, it's a snowball effect, right? So the first couple of weeks are a little bit of a grind, but after the first couple of weeks, you start to build the habit. 
And now it's a little bit easier because the habit is starting to form. And once the habit has formed, now you start building upon the habit you've already created. And then the next thing you know, you look back and you're like, holy crap, I just ran a marathon. I remember when I couldn't run two miles and now I just ran a marathon. Like that's a true story. I used to run marathons. So I remember when I was 15 and I wanted to join the Navy, I went out for a two mile run. I could not do it. I could, I could barely walk for the next three days after that two mile run that I walked and I ran or I walked and I ran. Well, fast forward several years later, I ran a sub three hour marathon, right? It doesn't happen overnight, but the disciplined approach to doing the things I know I needed to do to get me where I wanted to be, that works. Thanks for sharing that. I think that you could touch on a couple of things. One, David Goggins, uh, Can't Hurt Me. That's a great book. Yeah. Hal Elrod, Miracle Morning. Another great book. Obviously, we just talked about that. But also Jocko Willings. Uh, I think it's Discipline yeah. is Freedom, right? Yep. Yeah. Or Freedom is yeah. Discipline. Love Jocko. Yeah. Like that's another great book on this topic of what we're talking about. Yeah. And there's some great podcasts out there too, right? There's, uh, there's other podcasts, you know, like Jocko has a podcast where he interviews some really great people. And so you don't just hear it from him, but you hear different aspects of life and discipline and motivation and how to be successful from the people that he interviews. And so, and there are, you know, there are a bunch of others out there too. Obviously the agent podcast, right? You look at that one as well. You'll have great examples. But yeah, I think, you know, nobody's alone in this world, especially now with as much technology as we have, right? You know, 30 years ago, there were no cell phones. There were no podcasts. There was, there was no YouTube. You were alone on an island unless you just happened to know somebody that wasn't. Now it's so easy to reach into the interwebs and find tangible, not only examples of how someone did overcome the situation they were in, but actionable disciplinary steps to move you in the right direction. There, we just have such a great base of resources that we just didn't have before. And so that's huge for a lot of people to read, dive into those things, right? Read those books, listen to those podcasts, make the time to pour into yourself by, by having other people's example resonate with you. That's very important. Yeah. And everybody has value, right? Everyone's unique. Everybody has something. And exactly. when you take a moment to stop and self-evaluate that and take five minutes to dig a little bit deeper, you're going to find that value. And that value is what you need to share with people in order to build and connect those relationships. Exactly right. Yep. Exactly right. Walter, this has been awesome. I want to be respectful of your time and thank you for joining me today. Oh, Where, my pleasure. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was great, man. I like going deep. Where can people find you if they want to get in touch, if they want to reach out, if they want to have a conversation? Oh man. So the, the easiest thing is just email me. I have the, the greatest email in the world, walter.key at gmail.com. I got in on the ground floor <laughs> or, you know, it's just a unique name. You know, Walter is not a popular name and key is the perfect last name in real estate anyway. So walter.key at gmail.com. If you, if you Google, you know, walter.key realtor, you'll find me on, you know, Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm all those spots, but that, you know, the easiest thing is just shoot me an email. I'm, I'm always receptive to emails. Love that. Walter, thanks for joining me, man. You have a good day and take care. Talk soon. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Hey guys, it's Ray. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Thanks so much for being here and we'll see you on the next one.